Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ, all of you. Sorry, I was late because the angel Jibreel he just came to me, and we were negotiating uh, the details of the plastic surgery for my chest. Uh, as you know, uh, you know, I have some defect uh, in wisdom and faith, and uh, Allah, who usually say be and is going to be. Uh, look like he lost his magical stick, which he it's used like you know, like Hori Butter. He said, like, be like this, and you will be like became a pig or a rat. This is what Allah he used to do, he did to the Jews, and you know, but look like it's not working no more. I mean, I think maybe the stick expired. And this is exactly what happened to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The Prophet have a lot of defect, and who says that? The Prophet himself. And how Allah want to fix the defect? Very simple. Actually, it's a very unique way if you think about it. He sent three angels, and I don't know why three angels. And one of them is Jibril, and he's in charge. Look like uh, Jibril is an uh, insurgent. He's like a, he have a specialty in cutting chest and cleaning organs. And, and then after they cut his chest, uh, 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 my friend Jibril, you know, because we used to be together in the school, uh, he took all the organs of Prophet Muhammad, which is very normal practice, by the way. I mean, this is an angel of God, and he's trying to fix the problem of the Prophet of God. So what do you expect him to do? So he took all the organs of Prophet Muhammad. And by the way, maybe some of you are like, uh, what? Come on. Uh, this is a true story. Yes, there's no witnesses, but who said that in Islam you need witnesses for any story? Since when? And this is a clear proof that Muhammad is not a fraud. It's a very, very clear evidence. Now, who is a Muslim is willing to call me and tell me he believe in this story. I understand you are a Muslim, and you have the right to believe in what, whatever you want, as anyone in the world. You know, believe, no problem. But I want you to tell me how you believe in it. Maybe I will believe too. Maybe there is something missing I did not notice, and maybe you can uh, show it to me. A prophet of God, who got a surgery and the purpose of this surgery to install faith and wisdom you know forget about everything forget about uh, whatever people say i mean let us focus in the story the story alone is said by muhammad approved by muslims no muslim can say it's not authentic not a single muslim can say that this is not an authentic story which mean Either this story is believable or Muhammad is a liar. <clears throat> hmm? Any Muslim? Anyone? My Skype is open. Either Muhammad is a fraud or you Muslims explain to us how this happened. Very simple. There's no need for, uh, there is no need to be a scholar. I mean, you show me what how this is, can be true. A God, his name is Allah. He sent a team of three angels. One of them, his name is Jibreel. And Jibreel, obviously, is coming with this surgery tool. He cut open the chest of the Prophet. Peace be upon him. Don't forget to say that. He cut the chest of the Prophet. And then after he cut the chest, he brought a golden tray. Have two dishes. And for sure, they are from gold too. And the dish, number one, have wisdom and dish number two have faith 
and before he do install the wisdom and the faith in the chest of the prophet and is in his throat he took all the organs of the prophet Muhammad and Muhammad have a lot of organs by the way because a prophet like prophet usually they have more organs than human human being I mean they have a backup batteries especially this is Muhammad and he have a special sexual power as you know but the, the, the hadith confirmed that that Muhammad used to sleep with all his wives in at that time in a 20 minute I mean even a rabbit he can do that this guy he have what 13 wives 11 wives so he took all the organs out and the purpose of this uh, uh, the story is to prepare Muhammad to go to heaven do we have any Muslim want to say anything any comment you agree you disagree you see when we challenge we got what we got a bunch of babies shouting and screaming at us and the Muslims they make videos uh, exposed in Christian print okay where are you they got some of them they are famous but they are kids still just two days ago we put them in their place and everybody saw that they don't even dare to speak to me and you notice I will come everybody to call so the one who is not let us say he is not educated in Islam I take it easy with him right so I speak with the young one the old one and when I say young one you have to be an adult you know uh, but uh, even if you are young you don't have too much education no problem I take it easy with everybody where are they so this is what you want us to believe in and you are telling me that Muhammad is not a liar <clears throat> hey, by the way if I lose my internet uh, just please understand uh, there is a problem uh, in the area here because we have too much snow Yeah, they don't dare to talk to me. We know it. This is why they, you know, like uh, I don't want to talk about them. But uh, this is a clear evidence. Actually, this is the this is the point of this debate. I said before they will not let me talk. You remember? And this is this is why I say it. And actually, in his post, even posting for him, I said I will I will be alive in my channel because I know they will not let me talk. So we know who they are, and they knew who they are. This is why they did not dare to speak to me because they knew who they are. They cannot debate Christian Prince. They cannot have a conversation, you know, playing videos and eh, well, did you say that to the girl? Did you? Yes, I said that to that girl, but you duct tape, you coward. It was that girl who said that Jesus, he played with his mother boobs and he was a guy. It was your sister, the decent sister. Coward like your prophet. Uh, and you know, it's a it's a it's a it's a great uh, a moment for me when I say to the bunch of hyena you're a stupid prophet those hyena they were like supposed to they, they they thought they are making a trap for me like the line is coming we will gang against him you're a stupid prophet and here we go I prove it every day if this Muhammad is not a stupid he will not say this story prove me wrong This is a story from the mouth of Muhammad proving that Muhammad is a stupid. Why? Because number one, Muhammad saying that Allah, he have to install a dish of wisdom. That's mean he have a defect of wisdom. What do you know? What, what do you mean wisdom defect? Do you know what wisdom defect mean? That's mean this guy is an idiot, stupid. Did Allah install a dish of wisdom for Moses? No. Abraham? No. Isa? No. Isaac? No. Jacob no the only one who needed a surgery according to your prophet is your prophet do you see it 
And the funny, Muhammad, after the surgery, is telling this story. That's mean he was a fool, and instead he's a fool because if he's smarter now, he should not tell this story. Do we have any Muslim when I explain? What kind of God does God is? I mean, this story alone is enough to prove that Islam is a fraud and Muhammad is a scam. A dish of wisdom, a dish of faith. And really, I want to thank the, the one who drew this picture. I don't know who is he, but if you guys, you have a skills, draw pictures for Islamic stories we, we mentioned to you, and let me have it. So we can use it. It's a great thing. It's a great easy. It's a great easy way, so people they can remember. Because you see, images, images is very good to explain issues. I wish I was there in the time of the surgery. I will use my phone to record the whole process. This is amazing. This is so beautiful. I will be crying. I will be crying seeing the prophet getting a upgrade of wisdom and a new upgrade like. A, a, Android 10 Where are they Do we have any Muslim in the chat you would like to uh, Join us and explain to us what's happening You know what I don't know do you think I have an uh, uh, a surgery too? What is this? Your voice is so relaxing to listen. Yeah, I, I, I was, I was uh, uh, thinking to uh, work as a singer in the heaven of Allah. And my favorite song will be in the heaven of Allah. I wonder how, I wonder why. Uh, you, know, you, know, you know the song? I wonder how, I wonder why. Each time I look around me, I found a bunch of potatoes screaming at me. I turn my head up and down. I turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it around. I know what I can see. A bunch of potatoes are scared of me. Where are the heroes? <clears throat> you said call us, we call you. We say call us, you don't call. And when we call you, you don't dare to talk to me. You hide behind the bushes and the... Uh, uh, Christian Prince, Christian Prince, read it, read this, uh, read this... Uh, wait, what, is, what is that? You just, you just played my voice reading it, you idiot. Why won't read it again? What happened? They're scared, terrified, the fear. Four, five, six, seven people sitting there in the room. They are talking to Christian Prince. Please mute him, mute, mute him, mute him. And he start using very filthy words. And, uh, you know, many people do not know that when the Muslims, they attack us, they help us. We put them in their place. They thought they made victory against our brother David Wood. The fact they are not, they are not nothing but a bunch of scammers, fraud. They made a mockery of him, but they cannot make mockery of me. They made a mockery of him because he's very polite. That is his weakness. He's a nice gentleman. He's a gentleman. A person like me, he will never be gentleman with the hyena. Now, I'm not talking about the Muslims, I'm talking about those team. You get what you deserve, and we put you in your place. They claim to be a prophet, uh, uh, like a, a teacher, like, you know, they are sent by the prophet to save Islam, give, give us donation. And then when we see their post in the internet, they never say, inshallah. 
Uh, many do not know how important this is, uh, statement is because according to Muhammad and according to Islam, according to Quran, this is forbidden. A true Muslim shall not make a promise without saying inshallah. Otherwise, this is a false promise. So either he was saying that without uh, without saying inshallah because he will not debate me for he knew it's a false promise or because he's a false Muslim, choose one. But if you think about it, you will see that not only he was when he speak about me, he don't say inshallah in all his posts. If you go to all his previous posts, nowhere he says inshallah. And this is why I ask him. It was a, it was a bust from the first second. It was very embarrassing in front of the Muhammadan. Why you did not say inshallah tomorrow you will debate me? Isn't it what this your religion teach you? So you claim that you are going to teach the Muslims to skill to school the Muslims what Islam is about, and you don't do even the simple basic thing. And because they knew they are no match because anything they will say is going to be used against them. So they decide to say nothing. Answer, did you say that? Did you say? <laughs> So they decide to say nothing. Uh, Insha'Allah, yes, <coughs> Insha, Insha, is like building something or doing something. Okay, uh, uh, by the like the will, you know, uh, uh, the the world can be building or can be, um, uh, if he will. So if Allah will, so you have to say that, and this is in the Quran. <coughs> you know. And by the way, this is explain why the Middle East is beyond the cave time, because everything they are run by the Insha'Allah. Why we don't have good schools? Because they say Insha'Allah we will have good ones. Why we don't have electricity? Insha'Allah we will have electricity. Why the whole industry stay there for five years? Nobody fix it because Insha'Allah we will fix it tomorrow. Actually, I remember when I used to watch the Saudi uh, weather news. I used to die laughing because the news weather. It's the most hilarious one. The guy in the news, he say this. Insha Allah, tomorrow, if Allah will, and only if Allah will, we will have rain. And insha Allah, by Allah will, we might have a speed of wind 20 mile an hour, if and only if Allah will. I mean, look at what kind of news this is news is. He's, a, he's afraid to say, if you don't say, uh, uh, if Allah will, they will kill him. Because that means he, he, he predict the future and he claimed to be a prophet. So they have to add, inshallah, every two seconds. King uh, 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 Fahed uh, is opening the door of the airplane, inshallah, now. And now, inshallah, he is stepping, the first foot he will step, inshallah, he will go down, say like, so what happened where inshallah is gone hmm? <clears throat> and inshallah we will fix the prophet uh, organs and inshallah why why allah did not say inshallah i will fix it why he did fix it without saying inshallah I look at the story of Jibreel. He did not say, "Inshallah, we will do surgery." Hmm? And then now we have a zero Muslim is willing to contact us. Zero. Anyone? We have only five fifty-eight. I think we are in the wrong time. Are we? Maybe because I'm making two videos, people they are they don't miss me. Maybe I should make them miss me. Come only maybe once every few days. All right, we have a Muslim like this. Hello. Hello. All right. Take care. Nice to talking to you. 
I mean, that was a great uh, input, by the way. Uh, I okay, I, I guess you did not hear him, but I am because I, I am the only one who can hear things nobody can hear, like Muhammad. This is why Muhammad he can hear the shaitan, he fought when somebody say Allahu Akbar. I mean, look at this guy. Look at this guy. How in the world this man can be a prophet of God? Shaitan, he fought because you say Allahu Akbar. You know, guess what? I fought too. Hmm? What kind of knowledge this knowledge is? Prophet Muhammad is an expertise in farting. Or the dish of wisdom in his chest. When Satan hears the call to prayer, he turns his back and break wind. What is that? This is so beautiful. Am I heard, guys? Is my voice coming? I hope I did not lose.
All right, hello guys. Um, I heard. Well, look like the broadcast still going. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> Uh, anyway, guys, I'm not going to stay long, really. Uh, uh, we have a difficulty here in the internet, and obviously it's not working very good. Uh, so I want to say thank you for being here, and always we will be welcoming Muslims to call us in the future. But I think in the future I will use um, a Pal Talk program uh, because I think they are trying to find my IP and flood. Uh, you know, I have always I use a frequent IP, fake IP. But even that, you know, uh, they can flood that fake IP and they can disturb your internet. And I think maybe it's possible that they are trying to do that. You know, they give me a call. They do not talk. They found the, the, the fake IP I'm using. They flood it, so I will lose the internet. So I think maybe from now on we will use Paltalk so they will not be able to... Uh, because Paltalk, it's, uh, you know, the call is not really like uh, Skype. Uh, it's uh, through the server of the company. Um, yeah. Anyway, we will be la we will be back uh, at night today. All right. So don't forget to join us. Um, maybe around uh, maybe nine p.m., which means maybe five hours from now. Uh, it's going to be morning for people in Indonesia, and going to be yeah. We will be we will be live on air. Uh, I really I want to thank everybody. And we are grateful uh, for having those people who they always uh, stand with us and support us. And uh, you see, uh, the Muslims, they do their best to defend their prophet, but they are not making a good case. They are attacking a person, uh, flooding internet, trying to block you, you know, for, you know. But this is a silly, it's a childish work. And this is a proof one thing, that Islam is false. You know what I mean? It's prove one thing. So everything they do, it's amazing that everything they do, they are helping us to prove our case. If they are not followers of cult, they will not do what they are doing. All right? So we will be live on air again. And with my love to everybody, uh, I'm proud of you. I'm happy that the Lord always grant us victory. I'm happy that we are learning, you know, all of us we learn every day. I mean, uh, uh, if you think I am a person who stopped learning, I will never stop learning. Only fool, he think he knew everything. Only fool one. You should never stop learning because the one of the joys of life is to learn. So a new day come, a new joy of learning come. And this is something beautiful. And this is why the difference between the Quran, the Quran says, ask not questions, chapter 5, 101. 102, explain why. Because former generation, they ask same questions and they left the faith. Islam forbid asking questions as long as they are important. The second you ask question about something silly, like, can I say, can I shave under my arm? The prophet is ready to answer you. The scholars are very happy to answer you. But the second you ask how the Quran is not created, Shut up. Those things we cannot ask. How Allah he sit in the chair? Shut up. How Allah he have a hand, but he is, uh, you know, shut up. So the second you ask a serious question, shut up. But if you have a question like, can I eat ice cream with my wife? Is it halal? All the scholars will be happy to answer you. Just ask silly, stupid questions, and you are more than welcome. And in this channel, we get this uh, funny prophet, Muhammad, Muhammad. We should see uh, the, 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 the best way uh, uh, a Muslim pronounce the word name of Muhammad is in Iran. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I mean, like, what is that? Or a guy in YouTube is trying to refute uh, Christian Prince and he want to teach Christian Prince Arabic. Uh, brother and sister, I don't speak Arabic, but I'm going to tell you that Christian Prince, he don't know Arabic. I mean, it's obvious. We don't know. Yeah. All right. So thank you all for being here. I will see you soon in a few hours. 
And uh, we will continue the same topic, by the way. I mean, because this is a very good question. You see, those questions, they can they can defeat Islam easy. And, and all the purpose of what we do here, to teach the Christians how to defeat Islam. I'm sick of it. Trust me, I'm not. I'm not here. I'm not here to train myself. I have all the knowledge. I do not need the training. I'm just trying to transform some of what I know, which can be used by you in a very easy way to destroy and to refute this cult. So nobody can deceive you. Your family, your wife, your children. They go to school. They meet with Muslim kids. They speak to them. So we have to arm ourselves with knowledge. Knowledge is our protection. Ignorance is our weakness. All right? So tonight we will go live, and mostly I will take uh, calls only from uh, Pal Talk, you know, and um, I will check with the internet company to see. Uh, because I know they have a problem, so it might be the, the internet company. They have, uh, you know, they sent me a text message before saying uh, there is a difficulty in the area because we have a snow, too much snow. Who want to play with the snow? Do you like to play with the snow? Santa Claus is in town. You know, always I imagine like a, a, be, be, before we go. I remember when uh, Christmas come, the Muslims they make a program. There's there's, there's thousands of videos in YouTube about haram. It's haram. It's haram to say your your kids to see Santa Claus. It's haram. So the Muslim they created a new character. It's his name, uh, uh, Baba Muhammad. <laughs> you know, in the Middle East, they use the the French term, which is Baba Noel. You know, like in English, we say Santa Claus. In the Middle East, most of countries they say Baba Noel. So the Muslim new Baba Noel. This is not the Christian version, Baba Muhammad. So the question was, uh, do you trust Trudy to put your son or daughter in the lap of a Baba Muhammad? Can you? It's a challenge. You know what I mean? It's a mission impossible. I don't know if I lost the internet again. Here we go. I lost the internet again. Yeah. 